Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig, and today, after many requests from you, I have a quick impression video. So we're gonna take a closer look at Cody James today. This is model number BBS17. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please subscribe. It would seriously mean a lot to me. After many requests from you guys for a video on Cody James, I got a pair in. This is gonna be a quick impression video though, so it won't be like some of the other extended tests where I put a boot to work for an extended period of time. Don't have that much time today to focus on it, but it will still give us a closer look at how this boot is made so that you can decide on whether or not you would like to try a pair for yourself. And before we break down all the details of this Cody James square toe boot, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Angel Jackets. Angel Jackets is an online fashion retailer providing affordable, high quality jackets so everyone can don one with confidence. They sell men's and women's jackets, but they also carry gloves, handbags, and more. I have their Surrey black leather blazer, which is 100% lambskin. It's so soft, so supple, and it looks great with cowboy boots. Check out all their styles of jackets at angeljackets.com, and a huge thanks to them for supporting the channel. Now let's break down all the details of this Cody James boot with The Rundown. All right, this is the Cody James model number BBS 17, and it's full grain leather on the foot, counter, and the shaft. This is their brown color, and it has a wide square toe with a double stitched welt. It comes in at 13 inches tall, and it has a one and three eighths inch compressed leather stockman heel. Using a compressed leather heel is a cost savings for them, which is going to help this boot be a little bit cheaper. It might not last as long as some of the real stacked leather heels, however. This also has a plastic heel counter on the inside, which will probably keep this from forming to your foot as well as some of the boots out there with leather heel counters. And plastic has cracked on me before. I've never had a Cody James boot before, but plastic heel counters can crack and then the whole support mechanism of the boot is put into jeopardy. So definitely cost savings here, not the best material, but what do you want for a sub $200 boot? For an outsole, it's leather, and we also have some brass nails and lemon wood pegs in here. Not nearly as many nails or pegs as some other brands would use, but it's still nice to see. On the inside, we have a leather lining. It appears to be pigskin, but that leather lining is a hung pigskin lining, so it's trying to cover up that seam that happens in a lot of boots, and uh, it will maybe keep from rubbing against your ankles if you've had a problem with that in other boots, which is always nice to see. For an insole, it's a non-removable leather and foam insole, what I like to call a soft leather insole, so you do have some cushion in there, but a top of leather so that your foot feels really nice while you're wearing it. These Cody James boots are made in Mexico and they're coming in at $189.99 at bootbarn.com. Now let's try this boot on to see how it looks and feels. All right, I got the Cody James boots on right now and they went on really well. They are size 10 and a half D. So I was looking at them online and I kind of thought that they looked like the way that Ariat makes their boots in Mexico. So I decided to go with the D width that I get from Ariat a lot from uh, Square Toes and it worked out great. So I would say that if you guys wear Ariat and you wanted to try Cody James, just use your same size and it should work out perfect. The insole feels good. It feels like there's a little bit more arch support than in Ariat or some other boots that I've tried in the past. So if that's something that's important to you, that's great. If you find yourself sizing down a lot, that might be a little bit of a problem. Like if I had to wear these for an extended period of time, since I'm a 12B true size, uh, the arch is in the wrong place for me. So a lot of times when I size down to uh, wear square toe boots, I'll have to 
make sure that there's less arch in there, uh, but it is foam at the same time, so it might not end up being that big of a deal. Still, it's something to think about. The leather feels good. Uh, it's nice and supple. The one thing that uh, is kind of throwing me off about these boots is that bulbous toe box. Here, let me give you a POV. This square toe sort of has a bulbous toe box. You can kind of see it kind of right there. See that line? So that's where that bulbous sort of weird toe box happens. I'm not so much a fan of that look. Uh, it might go away as it breaks in, but Right off the bat, it's not very appealing, at least to me and the style of boots that I usually like to wear. All right guys, so this Cody James boot was a little bit different than I expected it to be, but I think it's nice for the price. I thought it would be like a lot of Mexican made Ariat boots, and while it does have some similarities to Ariat, I like the hung pigskin lining better than what Ariat is making in Mexico, and the non-removable foam and leather insole in this Cody James better than the insoles that Area is releasing right now in their current made in Mexico lines. So overall, I think you're getting just maybe a little bit more from Cody James than what you would get at a similar Area boot. But there are some things about this boot that I'm not so much of a fan of, like this sort of bulbous toe box here on the square toe. It just looks a little bit funky and that may break in a little bit and sort of cover it up as as you know you wear this boot in uh, but we won't have time for that video today if I get another chance to try Cody James in the future for a longer period of time I'll be looking at that and also you can sort of see where the cheap parts of this boot comes into play and by that I mean like the factory methods for example on this boot right here you can still see a lot of the plastic that they use to wrap this boot up. So when boots are going through the factory in Leon, Mexico, where this boot is made, oftentimes they'll wrap the top of this boot with like a, a plastic wrap or a cellophane, just this part, while they're putting the sole on so it doesn't get scuffed up. And then they'll take it off when the sole is done or in the final steps of the boot being ready to ship out. And when they tear it off, you can sort of see it, the plastic here, uh, still sort of sticking out, which cheapens the look at first. I'm sure it will wear away because it is just a thin piece of plastic, but what do you want for a boot under $200? You're gonna get things like that throughout the boot. And here's a little stain down here. So it's not perfect. There definitely are factory methods that I'm seeing here that weren't quite cleared up, but Again, like I said, what do you want for a sub $200 boot? At the end of the day, I feel like you're getting a lot here for $189.99. Um, but again, this is only a quick impression video so you guys can see a little bit more of the details of this boot than what Boot Barn shows you online. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Cody James. Do you have experience with it? Let us know your experience down in the comments for everybody else coming through. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Cody James is a brand worn by many men, and you can only get it at Boot Barn. It seems pretty nice considering its price to wear out the town or around the farm. Yeah. Why don't you check out this extended test cowboy boot video up here? Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.